Hi, my name is Monica. I'm from cookie.com. And I'm here to talk about page slider three. This is the second video. In the first video, I talked about setting up a basic page slider. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to customize everything. So before we get started, make sure that you have your inside pages widget placed on your home page so that it's applied to every page inside page slider. And then we're going to go to the home page and I'm just going to start customizing. So for the button, you can customize the fill, stroke, and corners. And you can also change the typeface in the text panel as well as the color. You can also change the size just by dragging it out. To change the hover effect and active state, we have to open up the options. You can also choose to add a custom icon. And here you can manipulate the letter spacing. So now let's go ahead and preview. So here's our button with our custom hover and active states. So if the button options don't provide enough customization features, you can always create your own buttons and assign a graphic style to it. So what you would do is you would grab another button and you would check this box right here, use another object with graphic style. And we can just name it something like button. And then let's link this to section three. So I'll just put this on the side. And I'm going to create my object. I'm going to go ahead and use a state button. And I'm going to clear the styling, clear widget contents. So here's my custom button. I can go ahead and place it over here. And now that I have my object created, I'm gonna create a new graphic style. And I'm gonna call it button because that's what I named it over here. And finally, I'm gonna pin it so that I can control the positioning. And now when I preview, I'm gonna add a transition effect. So now let's take a look at the directional sample. You can use the sample that's provided or you can use your own objects. So these can be customized just by adding like a fill color and changing the stroke. You can easily make them circles by changing the corner radius. So each of these buttons has a graphic style assigned to it and you can see them right here. We have next, previous, down, and up. And so if we wanted to create our own buttons, we can easily do that. So here's a button that I quickly created. I'm going to apply 50% vertical positioning to it just to like position it. And then if I go to my graphic styles, the graphic style name that I want to use is QQ section down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new style. And then I'm going to delete this style. Then rename it. And these can be placed on individual pages as well. But for now, let's preview. So if we click on it, it brings us down a slide. 
So now we're going to edit the section's navigation. And you can edit this by opening the option panel. You can adjust the width or height, as well as the background color, border color, the spacing, the corners, the border thickness, and opacity. You can also style the hover and active states. And one thing to take note of is the scaling. So scale refers to how much bigger the tooltip will get. So if you have a scaling of two, that means the tooltip is going to be twice as big when you hover over it. And you can put decimal values if you want. You can also responsibly position it. Right now it's set to be in the middle of the page because it's 50% from the top. And then transition duration just refers to the amount of time it takes for the hover effect to take place. So I'm going to set that to one second so that you can see that. And then the tooltip name shows up when you hover over these tooltips. And it can be customized up here as well as in the text panel. You can choose when it appears. You can choose the position, as well as the inner spacing and pointer size. And the pointer size is the thing right here. So now we can go ahead and preview. And here's our customized sections navigation as well as our tooltip. So the slides navigation can basically be styled in the same way that the sections navigation is styled. It has a lot of the same options. And finally, we can customize Slide Picker. So there's three different ways in which you can use it. You can have it zoom, scale, or slide. So just as an example, I'll show you what the zoom effect looks like. So zoom will show all of your slides. And slide looks like this. You can also change the appearance of the titles. You can also add a custom icon that will show up. And you can even change the appearance of this icon. This is just an image that's added as a background fill. So if you wanted something different, you can also change the fill color. And then you can add a stroke and change the corner radius. There's our custom icon. One thing to remember when you're using Slide Picker is that you can't use it for touch devices such as your tablets or phones. So if you have a smaller breakpoint, Let's say that we have 650. You would want to hide this for your smaller breakpoints, and you can do that just by right clicking on it, selecting Hide in Breakpoint. And so that way you don't have to worry about it showing up. You can change the font that appears on Slide Picker by selecting it and by changing the typeface in the text panel.
Well, those are all the main widget parts. Um, just some things to remember. Everything on the home page needs to be pinned if you want it to show up. And everything on this main page will be placed on like a higher layer than all the other objects on your other page slider pages. So even if you place an object at the very top of your like layers, so if you placed it all the way up here, the objects on the home page will still show up above it just because of how the widget is set up. So if you want something to appear on top of everything else, place it on the home page. Well, that's all that I have for you. If you have any questions, you can always check out the documentation. As always, thank you for watching.